Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Andy. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. I had to actually like write out the description the other day of like what it is. And I was like, it sounds it like when I say it, it's not anything and everything off road. But like when we were writing it out, it sounds so dumb. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, we're always socially distanced. It's the only way we can do the show. Uh, I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast and Andy's in Oregon. Mm-hmm. So we're back to like the full expanse of Got the spread. U.S. Coast to coast. Yeah. Yep. Because you're miles from the Atlantic. He's miles from the Pacific and I'm team no coast. So team no coast. Perfect. Landlocked. Yeah. Team I like Pangea. It team, uh, if everything goes to hell other than Super Volcano and Yellowstone, my house is still here. Mm. I do have on record you saying that there are no vaccines for a Super Volcano. So. That is true. There, <laughs> if there that is, a... sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you would be know. affected by it too. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, sure, well, yeah. we've got volcanoes all around yeah. us. So. Yeah, that's but true. If, if Yellowstone goes, we're all doomed. Yeah, you've um, been affected out west more than anybody else has in the country recently. So, dude, if Fair Yellowstone enough. goes, there's so much ash in the sky, it's nuclear winter again. Okay. Mm. The last time it erupted, New- what is now New York City was under like, let's say, eight to 10 inches of ash. Mm-hmm. Sure. And that's, but now we're a geology podcast, so. <laughs> <laughs> Eclectic. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start with something that's going to erupt. No, that's not, that's not a good oh, segue at all. Uh, it's not going to erupt because from I. Nuclear winter. There you go. So here, here's what I'm going to say. 2021 Ford F-150 Raptor won four-wheeler pickup truck of the year award. Mm-hmm. I'm completely okay with this because. So- the scale of what the Raptor was to what it is now, like with the, with the TRX being so much bigger, mm. it makes the Raptor reasonable. It does. Um, I, th- I think we need to set the stage for the competitors okay. for what this, you know, truck of the year of award was. So it was F-150 Raptor, F-150 Tremor, Ranger Tremor, Frontier Pro 4X, Tacoma TRD Pro, and Tundra TRD Pro. So... There's the only noticeable trucks not there. Noticeable trucks not there, but also the only new, the only actually new truck in this whole thing was the Tundra because Tacoma's old. Frontier is new, but also old. <laughs> Ranger has been on sale since 2011 around the world. Yeah, 11 and or 12. Yeah. Tremor is, you know, okay. So it's an F1 fit. It's a new trim line. Like it's right. not. I would argue the F1, or excuse me, I would argue that the Frontier is, is new. I mean, that's the new, new Frontier, right? It is. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but parts of it are revised, not all new, versus the Tundra is all new. You know, they ground up and Frontier is, they modified the chassis. They, you know, took an engine that was two or three years old and and ran with it um and right to, to let the record show i i put almost 800 miles on a frontier earlier mm-hmm. or in the fall of 21 and i really like it is that mm-hmm. why nissan won't call me back oh wait yes no, <laughs> they, they knew i was going to put that mileage on it that was unlike the miami trip when i accidentally tripled the mileage on the kia seltos Mm. Nissan knew <laughs> that, mm. that mileage was happening. Uh, <laughs> Ross thought uh, everything was super close in Florida, and then he got there and was like, "Wait, what?" Oh, oh no, yeah, no. <laughs> and then, if you're going lengthwise, definitely not. <laughs> exactly. it, it, it was Miami to uh, to like the southwest coast, so it, it was a, yeah. one of my few navigational foibles. But uh, yeah, so so the Raptor won, and mm-hmm. uh, <sighs> trying to get to my Raptor photo really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, it's good it's good everybody says it's good you drove it right i like but i love them i'm sorry like it's it's not a hot take but the ford raptor is a good truck the f-150 crew cabs are massive the the ram crew cabs are massive like a crew cab truck now is so different in the full size variants i will say uh is it, there's so much space in there like uh, i mm-hmm. when i had to put car seats in one of these things I was able to like, my legs were fully extended and I was just bent at the waist and I and could like half walk in and out because there's no, <laughs> there's no tunnel. There's no hump. Mm-hmm. So uh, putting car seats <sighs> in and out was amazing in this thing, but like, it's a Raptor. It's proven the suspension's there. Like we know it's not going to tow a bunch. Right. Well, I, I think, but nothing right. else on that list is either. Like it's, 
It's uh, true. No, the Tundra can tow, but none of these, you know, they tested the off-road right. versions. Um, but no, the, the big change for the Raptor was coil springs in the back instead of leaf springs. We saw what it did for Ram, you know, Ram Definitely. went to coils in 2000, what, 2010 or so, maybe a little, maybe 09 for the generation prior to the current generation. And, you know, it, it paid huge dividends in terms of like compliance and comfort and the Raptor caught up. So it's really good. It's really good. So that's the news there. Uh, the other <laughs> news, since we're recording like rapid fire this month, so the news between shows is actually pretty slim. So today, Toyota released the Tundra Capstone Edition, which is basically exactly what you would expect. It's their Capstone Tundra. 22-inch uh, chrome wheels, some super fancy leather trim seats. Uh, there's power running boards and a bed step, much um, like the other brands are doing to get into the, you know, 12 foot tall beds these days. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that they were very keen on talking about their displays. Yeah. Earlier. The press photos are all display ish. Yes, they are. Um, and given, you know, this is a Tundra, this is a pretty mainstream truck, even if this is the top trim, but we saw the Silverado EV last week mm -hmm. and the screens that Toyota is pushing are not the same as not even close to what Chevy's talking about. So there's a 10 inch color heads up display. Chevy's talking about a 14, uh, the, you know, digital multi-informational display or whatever they call it, the, the screen behind the steering wheel, what's usually a gauge cluster, but is now just mm -hmm. a computer um, is 12.3 inches. I think Chevy's is bigger. There's a 14 inch touch screen in the center. And, you know, it, it's kind of like, they're not really moving it forward. So is is this the kind of thing oh my gosh google you're not helping me <laughs> there's a link in the notes i know but they wouldn't let me open any of those images in a new <laughs> oh. tab as i like to do so i was gonna be stuck with all of their press release in the with the image as well is this the kind of thing where toyota was like uh, and i know we normally jer joke about this with like with german manufacturers stuff they're like this one is only 6.8 inches because it's all of the inches that you will ever need like just mm. because they went with nine inches that's inappropriate <laughs> like this is this a toyota kind of thing being like you don't need 14 inches of display <sighs> 10 is enough well, it's like you know you get in the new ram 1500 or whatnot and it's like they've put a 60 inch television up exactly. you know in a vertical format <laughs> over you know and this is like an iphone one but you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I have my opinions on on some of the Toyota stuff that like I get it. And they I think Toyota really knows it's it's fan base. They buy a lot of their, their vehicles, car or truck, based on the idea that it's going to be the most reliable thing on it. Yeah, yeah, it's got these other things too, but really that's why they buy it is the reliability of it. And so like they can get away with not having the biggest splashiest features because their their clientele most of the time isn't gonna care because they're buying it because mm -hmm. it's a Toyota. Right. You don't shop Toyota for, you know, groundbreaking, uh, you know, chain moving tech. It's not right. You don't I own a Toyota. It. I get it. But, you know, I mean, it's like uh, technically all three of us thing. do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So so what Toyota do you own? Because we not a four wheel to... drive Toyota. Mine's a little oh. Toyota uh, Yaris. So not a four wheel drive. So <laughs> they're still good cars and, uh, and, and it probably won't break. It won't. It hasn't. It's all lowered in sway bars and intakes and all kinds of stuff. So it's it's, it's a so, go kart. It sounds so much fun. It is. Yeah. It's fun. I bet we could definitely fit all of it on the screen. Uh, you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, deceptively fun cars for autocross. That and the Mazda two are always kind I, of like absolutely for autocross. Yes. So, so. buttons wise, though, they still look like they have physical buttons for this Tundra everywhere. Thank God. Thank God. Oh my God. Yeah. That is my pet peeves and all pet peeves is uh, oh, trying to yeah. change climate controls or oh. anything at, you know, 80 miles per hour is like a death wish. Call and, me a carmudgeon. I want three dials. Give me temperature, fan speed, yeah. and, uh, and you radio know, volume. Direction. Just yep. give me the, yes. Oh God. Yeah. Just, like the, just give me it easy. The climate here is a toggle up and down, which. Mm. I could works. live with that. It works. 
Uh, it's better than the, that is my least favorite thing about the Lexus is center screen in the middle, buttons lining both sides. There's a button to go into the climate control screen. Uh, and then on the touch screen, you adjust the climate. So you can't adjust the climate unless you're on that screen. So if you want to go back to audio or anything else, you have to then click a different button and go away from it and then go back to climate and when you want to adjust it. Does yours, does it have the audio button and a media button? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I can't remember which German automaker it was. They, they were just, I read something about this. They were saying that to get to the fan speed, you actually have to go into a menu. Like you can't just like, oh, turn oh. it down. You have to be like, oh, okay, fan, okay. Was or so, or maybe it was actually, you know, it I might think not it was even a have been that Tesla, it was the, wasn't it? Maybe it was the Tesla. Maybe it was, was it something where even to, even to move the the air, it, like to so that's the Tesla. Side. This oh, is the Tesla. Tesla. Okay. Yeah, because everything's inside that that touchscreen to even yeah. adjust which way the vents point is in that is in that touchscreen. The yes. seat heaters were buried in menus because they were saying they wanted you to just run it in full self driving, and then the car would decide when you needed the seat heater on or the temperature on. like <laughs> i know i don't want the car to decide anything yeah. for me <laughs> ai will tell you how warm you want to be it's like my back hurts how does it know my back hurts like yeah turn oh, geez it's giving me an epidural of ibuprofen right now <laughs> actually that'd be great dude that's <laughs> fair <real>. fair enough <laughs> when you watch the the series the expanse they like whenever they go really fast in the spaceships they're all in seats and something gets injected to them that's always what i imagine mm -hmm. it is it's just like back pain mm -hmm. medication just right to you. I don't know. Mercedes is doing those, you know, 40 different settings for back massages. Oh, yeah. Stones right? and waterfall and all that. So we're not that far. Oh. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I think the big thing on the tech front these days is really just everybody jumped 10 steps as far ahead as they could get just to say they had it. Remember when BMW had, or maybe they're still doing it, but you could raise the volume or raise the temperature or the fan speed by like spinning your finger in front of the screen. Like oh. nobody asked for that, you know? And now it, they're backing it off to the point where everybody's going, oh yeah, wait a minute. We, we just get like my buttons back. Have, have either one of you spent any time in the VW ID4? I did. did. Yeah. Everything, everything. I mean, like the Worst. map lights are touch sensitive. You know, you can say like ID4, I'm cold, and it'll like turn the thing, you know, turn the yeah. heat up. And um, yeah, it's a, uh, there's a lot, it's like, it's like driving an iPad pretty much. It, it so. is. I, it's I, infuriating. I only had one on a test drive for like an hour. And even mm -hmm. in that hour, I was just like, I guess I'm never going to figure out how to do this stuff because I want to experience driving the car. I will say like, the only thing I liked, well, I shouldn't say the only thing I liked about it. Parts of it that I did enjoy was the seat was great. It was like a mm -hmm. memory foam seat. Mm -hmm. But all I could think about was like a Tempur-Pedic mattress over time that slowly and slowly and slowly <laughs> doesn't like, yeah. am I going to start? Which is that's every seat yes. actually. Like they're all foam based. It but is like, right. Right. Uh, yeah. That's my back felt great for my test track. But that infotainment was there's videos of people pushing the buttons, like the window control buttons, and nothing happens. Yeah, like you know? it's it's not ideal. Yeah, I, I, I'm sick of it. I don't know. I have a blood blister on my finger right now because I closed my finger in my garage door. And even like my iPhone touch response doesn't mm. work from that. Because Is it your blood blister? <laughs> like yeah, you can't see your it, fingerprints? It <laughs> doesn't see your like heat doesn't get to it or something. Like I don't want the car to do that. You know, so what you're saying is you need to buy a tiny sausage that you can use to use your iPhone now. <laughs> yeah, it's a little can of Vienna sausage. Yeah, exactly. I can't remember where I heard that. It was somewhere in like South Korea during the winter. They all use little sausages to use their phones because it's so cold. Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> Why does my car smell like hot dogs? Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's not a terrible smell. I mean, it's, a... it's the most delicious stylus. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're done, snack. Oh. Oh. oh my god also do you know how dirty our phones are <laughs> oh yeah no disgusting <laughs> disgusting gee sir how did you get food poisoning anyway i, I don't right. know yeah. i don't know <laughs> ross your phone mount is complete speaking of phones yeah <laughs> that was a perfect segue the phone mount for the lexus that has been overcomplicated and overcomplicated is finally complete that you didn't so. send me pictures of no because sam so we have the CX-5, Sam's car, 
Yep. Uh, that's a lease. So that is currently parked in the garage while mm. I drive the Kia Stinger for the week. Mm. And she's driving the Lexus. So I have not had a chance to put it, put the phone mount into the Lexus yet. But, but as it soon is as completed. It, it, as, yeah. And I didn't want to do it tonight because it's uh, fucking freezing here. So, I, I have kind of an example photo that of what is I think is going to be up there. Effectively what it will look like okay. with a RAM mount instead of a 67 designs mount. Okay. But, yeah, see, you can see in that picture, there's the climate button. Yeah, on the, climate uh, audio setup mm-hmm. display, yep. Mm-hmm. So. You have yeah, map phone and destination, is, uh, yeah. <laughs> phone mount's done, finally. And uh, I'm looking forward to having... Um, Wait, do you not have the little temperature buttons that this thing has? I do. But that's only temperature. Doesn't do anything else. Oh, uh, you don't use auto? No. Oh, I think I that auto climate I, control. I don't know I, why, but I just do. <laughs> it bothers me so much when it ramps the fan speed up to a hundred percent. Yeah, but cruise yeah. control when you know cruise control like floors it to get back up to seventy five or something. Mm-hmm. I, I, I but it only it. does it for a little bit, and then it calms down. I can't stand it. Yeah, then Mercedes Benz will drop <laughs> iVisine in your eyes when that happens. Right. Oh, really? No. <laughs> I mean, they do like perfumes yeah. and stuff. Why not be a little That's Vizine? True. Like... <laughs> One of the perfumes that they uh, that they're putting in in the glove box to blow through the vents now is hot dog scent. Nah, oh, God, it's called a I love... <laughs> Yeah, gotta love that. Anyways, so the phone mount's done, and the wheels have arrived for the GX. They showed up today. So thank you to uh, what were they called again? Motegi Trail Lights. Oh yeah, I was just looking at those actually today. Yep. So, so big, big, big thanks to Wheel Pros and Motegi for jumping on this project, and they look fantastic. So because you chose very, very... the correct one, because I told you to get that one. <laughs> we had a mutual agreement, but yeah. <laughs> Um, Re- really i gave my uh two cents and then you made a decision which is I mean, actually what it is yeah well that's yeah that's part of it so yeah bronze um, yeah, wheels when, when on a black truck is bronze, gonna look fantastic you know, is black it's gonna look great and yeah they weigh uh i think they weigh like 24 ish pounds which for a 17 by 5 with like a 2500 pound load rating is good yeah so looking forward to seeing them on the truck coming soon some big pv toyos yeah the toyos yeah which you gotta I'm, you gotta I'm looking what, to get what do you have to do before you can get those on let's just say that there will be a, a cutting apparatus involved exactly ah. <laughs> i mean there will be a lift kit involved too but there will right, also yeah. be a cutting apparatus so say i got my meat on i didn't have to cut in you can fit those toyos on a gmt 800 and 900 <laughs> bone stock with like was, ma- with a heat gun dude i and on the lexus it's a process I, I i complained on twitter today because there's no good like chevy forum for trucks like because of the suburban and mm-hmm. i i'm lamenting the fact that i don't have i hate mud like i had for the land cruiser like mm-hmm. that like, is the best place ever to find anything about a land cruiser even the sequoia i can still yeah. go back to mud i go on but, mud every day but when you're going to find stuff on suburbans it's like six different chevy themed forums and none of them are like the peak uh of of knowledge and so it's very it was lamenting the fact i was like what Um, can i get like maybe i need to go back and grab a mega cruiser or something like just i'm not (laughs) doing that that's what everybody needs to do just bring it over a mega cruiser yeah one of one of 300 or whatever like yeah (laughs) why not or do who, was that Hennessy that was boxing in expeditions and turning them into three row or boxing in like F three fifties and turning them into three row expeditions? Oh, things? the Centurion or no, I found a, uh, I found a three row excursion, but that was Arctic trucks. Mm. Um, but the Centurion was like a, that was like a Ford super duty. I think that had three door or well, six doors. No, but. I'll, I'll send you what I'm thinking of later, but so that's my news. And Sweet. You have nothing except uh, lamenting the. Uh... I I have sent emails okay. to, to people that I'm still like I'm still on the, the 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 travel trailer kick, and so trying to find people that will let you borrow travel trailers is not super. Oh. Uh, like I've talked to one manufacturer, and they said yes, and then my follow up email has then just kind of been hanging. So I've now sent a follow up to the follow up uh 
No one, no one told me when you start a podcast how many emails you were going to send. Oh my god! For the world's random. First of all, like oh. when we went when we started doing guests, that that went tenfold on emails, and now now talking to people to try to do stuff to have content to talk about on the show is even it's even more. Like it's just mm-hmm. kind of nuts. So, but lots of new faces. Andy has joined us tonight. Yes. Yes. From, so from one of those companies that is just like, if, if you don't know who <laughs> Indy works for, uh, there we gonna, go. We're going to have some words because, like, it, <laughs> you, you don't have to say all the words. Like, you say four letters and everybody knows exactly mm-hmm. what you're talking about. So, yep. uh, well, a, a name that's the equivalent of like a Kleenex in the, uh, in the field. So, Andy's here from Warren for Warren hey, Industries. That's right. Wheat. So what I, uh, you, what do you want to talk I'm, about first, Ross? I'm fairly certain there are, <laughs> are pictures of my dad's Jeep from when I was a child with a Warren winch on the front. And that's the reason that I'm here, you know, yeah, for, for multiple reasons. That's not, but so, yeah. So, uh, Andy, what do you want to start with? You want to tell us a little Warren history and, oh, uh, sure. and, and the infamous massive Warren unit that, you know, graced the pages of so many off-road magazines when we were all kids. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, history of the 8274, right? So just a little bit about, about Warren. We've been in business since 1948. Uh, the, the business got its start by uh, basically inventing locking hubs for uh, Jeeps that were coming back from World War II. It made them more drivable, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, that's kind of where it got its start. The winches didn't really start until the late 50s. And so uh, in 1959, we started, we had pioneered the electric winch. It was called the Bellevue. It was a 6,000 pound winch. It didn't have free spool, but what it did have was the ability to operate when the vehicle wasn't running on like a PTO winch, right? So if anybody out there has ever gotten a carbureted vehicle on an incline, you can get fuel starvation and the, the vehicle will sputter and might not run. Well, if you've got a vehicle with a carburetor that won't run and a PTO winch, you can't recover yourself. So one of the early selling features I'm told was this uh, ability to run off of a battery. So, Mm. um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, we're primarily known for winches and hubs. We've been making bumpers for about 40 years. So we make a whole host of bumpers. And then we also offer tons of rigging accessories, uh, you know, winch lines, fair leads, uh, shackles, all that stuff as well as now we offer wheels in a couple of different bolt patterns, five by 127. And uh, we're coming out with our six on 136 by 139.7 to fit uh, oh. GX, for instance, uh, yeah, Bronco. GM. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of six lug vehicles. So mm. we announced those, those will be out and I'm told like late February now. Oh, wow. And then we've got a, a whole bunch of new Bronco stuff coming out. We've got Bronco front and rear bumpers. We'll have rock sliders. Uh, and then, uh, we have the, of course, those worn Epic wheels that'll, that'll fit as well. So, uh, we've been doing the off-road thing for, for quite some time and, uh, uh, we are, you know, pretty synonymous with, uh, with off-road. So, but we also make a whole line of utility products. So we've got, uh, um, you know, your trailer winches, we've got handheld winches. We've got something called the drill winch, which will turn your drill into a 750 pound pulling tool. Sorry, we what? offer hoists, <laughs> which raise and lower things. So, yep. Oh, I've never heard of the drill winch, and I now oh. have to Google that because that's well, amazing. You haven't lived. So, the uh, yeah, drill winch, uh, I believe it's 40 feet of either steel or synthetic line. It's got a clutch on it. Uh, real handy with uh, for loading trailers. Hunters like pulling game out of the, the um, you know, ravines and whatnot with it. Uh, we used it in the shop the other day to uh, align a track bar. So we just kind of hooked it together. There you go. That is brilliant. I like. Yeah. That's so cool. I never. It's got a load that. limiter on it, so you can't grenade it. Dude, mm-hmm. that's so like. Isn't that a crazy? I'm 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 picturing like moving stuff into my garage that's not running. Yeah. Like just grab the drill winch. That's just so cool. grab the drill winch and your favorite cor- corded drill. Don't use an impact wrench, but a corded drill or yeah. cordless drill will work. So. So impact, the faster, sends yeah, sends it. Yeah, it's just it's too much too much impact on on the gears. I, if you I have so. a 
drill from like the 60s from Sears that has no mm -hmm. clutches or anything on it. So <laughs> I might not use that one if that's going to be. <laughs> there you I go. hear that winch, I, uh, that, that, that drill. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Exactly. Hear it. My grandfather's the best thing I've ever owned. <laughs> <laughs> I had this, I had a, a very similar drill, a black, an old industrial black and decker. My father used to work for an industrial supply company and he had this big orange black and decker drill and it'd take your wrist off if you, exactly. if you caught it on something. Mine, mine has the, the, the side. Oh handle. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> we have, I, I used to have one of those, but yeah, so, great. so, so you guys have seen, how's uh how's the last two years been seeing some, some uptick, a lot of, uh, a lot yes. of people getting into off-road in lately. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No, we're, yeah. We're definitely not sitting around with nothing to do. I'll tell you that. Uh, no, it was, uh, I think like a lot of businesses in, in this uh, sphere, we weren't sure what was going to happen. We thought maybe the market would contract and it did the exact opposite. It blew up. <laughs> so yeah. uh, oh. couple that with supply chain issues and it's, you know, some of the stuff is on back order, a lot of it, like everybody else. But uh, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a good, good couple of years for us. Uh, we actually have made a couple acquisitions too. Uh, we acquired Factor 55, mm -hmm. which makes uh, precision rigging gear, best known for closed system winching and shackle mounts for the front uh, of a, a winch line. Uh, then we acquired Fabtech suspension out of uh, California, American made oh. uh, truck suspension, probably best known for full size Chevy stuff, yep. but they do a little bit of everything. And then uh, our re most recent acquisition was Fab Four's uh, bumpers, uh, Fab Four's out of the Carolinas, so South mm. Carolina. <laughs> so they uh, they build a whole host of, of different bumpers. And uh, yeah, so we're actually, uh, we actually own four companies now. And uh, yeah, it's exciting times, you know, lots of change and lots of uh, new opportunity. So yeah, and, and I know Power Sports has kind of exploded as well. Power the UTV Sports, market is wild. Yeah, oh, it's wild. It's in it's incredible. Yeah, we came out with a couple of uh, new power sports winches about eh, about three years ago, and our Axon and VRX. And actually, what's kind of neat, our Axon winch is actually the most state of the art winch that we that we make. Hmm. So it's not very big. It's like even our, the biggest one is a, about larger than a little bit larger than a box of Kleenex. And the whole the cool thing about that, Warren prides itself on innovation, and one of the most innovative things on that winch is we have a, uh, a product called Motactor. And what that is, is it's the motor and the contactor control in one unit. And what that does is save about 50% uh, of the installation mm. time on a UTV or ATV, because you don't have to find where to put right. that contactor box. Right. It's all right there. It's also digital control. So uh, we, have, we recently came out with a product called uh, our hub wireless receiver. And that's actually a Bluetooth controller for your winch. So when you use that with the Axon uh, Power Sports winch, you get a whole bunch of functionality. All of the Axons will allow you to use the smartphone and show the battery on your vehicle, whether it's an ATV or a UTV or a truck or what have you. But with the Axon's digital technology, you also get load information on the phone as well as motor temperature information on the phone. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, so the Axon is the most full-featured winch we have right now, and of course oh, that's man. available for for ATV, UTV, 35, 45, and 5,500 pound capacities. Uh, what's interesting is uh, we're starting to see the 45s and mostly the 55s being utilized on crossover vehicles, mm -hmm. and in every market other than the United States and Canada, the Suzuki Jimny, the new Jimny. Yep. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Subaru lot of cross tracks. A lot of cross tracks. We we actually make a, a what we call our semi hidden kit for Subaru, uh, Forester, Cross Trek, and Outback, and we uh, use that uh, that Axon or our VRX, mm. which is another great winch. All these winches are coming out of our factory in Clackamas, Oregon, and uh, uh, they uh, yeah, it's a great application for a whole host of things. So that's the phone thing, and that kind of application is is really. The fact that you can get that info on the fly mm -hmm. is kind of a game changer because a lot of people, you know, we've all seen it. Somebody just goes and, and winches to their heart's delight. Hearts. And <laughs> next thing you know, yeah. there's um, small problems on the back. You know? Right. So that, yeah, that's, that's.
Oh, he froze. Oh, oh, no, you came back. Any <laughs> anticipation of that that tech? <laughs> We're good. Uh, do you anticipate that? And you might not be able to say, but that's that tech making its way to automotive, to the full-size applications? I, I don't have any definitive on that, but it certainly sounds logical. Okay, <laughs> we can speculate. We can speculate. So... Don't, uh, don't connect dots, Ross. <laughs> it's fun as, as, the, as yeah, every PR person's favorite line, right, is Cannot uh, we can't comment on future. On future. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. I was just watching an episode of Succession and one of the guys is walking in the street going, no comment, no comment. No comment. Yeah, that's right. Somebody turns in and says, you don't have to say that. He's right. like, you just don't comment. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. So that's pretty cool. So yeah. what, um, you know, people I, also like, pigeonhole winches into automotive but have you guys seen other like an uptick in applications for not off-road purposes as well yeah so we have a, an entire line of industrial winches so like for tow trucks wreckers uh u.s military military and other places uh winches that go up to thirty thousand pounds in capacity uh, we have hydraulic and electric winches that are in our uh, industrial series. We actually just came out with a new line called our Series G2 winches, and those are geared towards that more industrial uh, 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 segment. So, like I said, towing wreckers, big big trailers. This this um, Series 30 XL is a hydraulic 30,000 pound winch. The winch itself weighs 250 pounds of cast iron. Oh my it's God. massive. It's the kind of thing you you put on the back of this like. To, to bring up a tank onto a, a trailer or something like that. So, so we have that segment of the business along with things like I was showing, like you showed the drill winch, which, which is our utility mm -hmm. commercial segment. And then we have our, our truck segment and then our power sports segment. So, uh, but yeah, we've got all kinds of stuff and we're, we're constantly coming out with new, new applications and new innovations. Mm -hmm. So are all of the extreme, well, I'll call them extreme duty stuff. Is that, are they all steel cable? Are there any applications that use synthetic line for the 15 or 12,000 pound plus weight? Yeah, so our truck winches, they start at 8,000 pounds these days and they go up to 16 and a half thousand pounds. All of those winches wow. are available with steel or synthetic rope. Mm -hmm. And then when you get into the industrial segment, so again, wreckers, that kind of stuff, uh, you're looking at eight to 30,000 pounds. Good Lord. And we do offer an industrial um, synthetic rope. Hmm. And how, how thick is that? Is like uh, I think it's half inch if I remember correctly. Wow. Uh, but uh, it's not as popular because when, when people, when people uh, like for instance, uh, tow truck operators, they're dragging cable on the ground all the time. Yeah. So one mm -hmm. of the, one of the questions I get asked more than any other question is, steel versus synthetic yeah. and it really depends on what you're doing and how you're using it so steel you know we've been selling winches since 1959 with steel cable we all of our winches are still available with the exception of one with steel cable and steel is super super durable uh it's highly abrasion resistant and uh it just i always say steel rope doesn't care like you can do almost anything to it now you don't want to use it if it gets twisted or it gets a kink Braze. in it or something like that yeah. you don't want to use any any line like that right uh, the downside of course is it develops steel burrs and can cut your hands but you should always wear winching gloves um and then in it there. stores more potential yep. more potential energy than synthetic rope right right so when it's fully taut it's got a lot of energy behind it mm -hmm. synthetic rope is lightweight easy to handle you can tie it in a knot you can tie it in a bow uh it, it just doesn't it, it it's it doesn't store the potential energy under load Conversely, you can cut it very easily. Um, so abrasion is the number one enemy. So if you're, dra you're dragging it across a rock or a stump or something like that, you've got to lay down something. So a lot of our winches, winch rope comes with abrasion sleeves, which is mm -hmm. a sliding sleeve that moves up and down that line. So if you're winching over an apex, you lay that sliding sleeve over that, you can pull the rope through it, or you can put down a blanket or floor mat, something like that. Um, so uh, each has its plus or minus in the towing industry. Again, these guys are pulling cable all day, every day, and they're dragging it on the ground. And so they don't oftentimes want to have to worry about the abrasion that can come with, uh, with synthetic rope. Granted, you will save weight. So um, in the truck side, there's definitely a shift towards synthetic rope. I, I have mm -hmm. three rigs with three worn winches, and they all have 
synthetic rope on there. It's just easy. It's so much easier to deal with. So. Yeah, I think 15 years ago, my ATV and everybody's ATV was steel. And now everything is synthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we see it in, in the trucks too. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's just, you know, it has... In my mind, it has like a 10% higher chance of something going wrong, but the benefits are more than that 10% detriment. And I think yeah. that's probably the way a lot of people see it. And again, it sort of depends on what you're doing. If you're using your winch on a ranch or a farm or you're skidding logs or something where you're really using the winch for utility work, steel can still be a great option because it's dragging against things and all that. And you don't have to worry mm-hmm. about replacing it if it gets if there's abrasion because there's it's very unlikely. Now, again... You never want to use any winch rope seal or synthetic if it's damaged or anything because it's a you know it's going to be your weakest link. So, but yeah, there is definitely definitely a shift towards the synthetic rope, mm-hmm. and with yeah. good reason. I mean, so that conversation was how you and I were introduced, and thank you, Jeff Henson. Um, <laughs> and you know, it, oh, that's where is this? <laughs> sorry, Chris. Chris just brought up a picture of a. I'm just uh, having fun TJ, at this point. <laughs> TJ, that is. That the, thing is the left clear. front is buried in a mud hole where the rest yes. of the truck is yeah. about to be as the winch pulls them through the <laughs> that, mud hole. That's clear yes. in that mud bit as it gets pulled through. That's getting pulled through, not out. It is getting pulled through, yeah. And so you can see this is actually a good photo here to, to point something out. So um, our line is pri- uh, proprietary. It's called Spidora. And you can see the, the red that's on the, the winch drum and then it's slightly coming off the, 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 into the mud there. So that last layer is basically a Nomex layer. So Nomex is you know, heat resistant. Uh, oftentimes race suits are made out of it. Yeah. So we, we coat the last wrap of rope with that heat resistant fabric to guard against damage to the rope. Hmm. Uh, the other thing that's nice about it, because we made it red, is you can see when you're getting towards the end of the rope. <laughs> So with if you've got a winch with synthetic rope on it, you want to keep at least one full wrap on there, which is what you're seeing there. One layer of, of rope mm-hmm. still left on there at a minimum. If you've got steel, you can go down to half a drum because it bites into the to the to the winch drum a little bit differently. So, mm. but uh, there's your tech tip Tuesday. So that's it is tip. Tuesday. It I just threw me it. for a loop. <laughs> yeah, because nobody asked for it, but that's okay. So the shows air on Wednesdays, but we'll make it work. <laughs> that's oh, a, there that's you a good go. Tip. I, We're recording Tuesday, real world. So <laughs> that's a tip I don't think I've ever heard before, and I've been using winches my whole life. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So and we did. We brought that through the mud. You know, a lot of our a lot of our employees are also users and enthusiasts. You know, I mean, it's it's truly a you know, for users, by users kind of scenario at Warren. You go to mm-hmm. the parking lot, you'll see all kinds of four-wheel drives. You know, I, I'm just about everybody I work with has some sort of four-wheel drive vehicle and we, we use it for recreation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you learn to pull cable and That's you know, I teach winching classes and, and uh, you know, I attend a lot of the shows and, and all that. And so uh, uh, it's fun. Extra R&D on your, on your payroll. There is, there is a lot of R&D. One of the more clever headlines we came up with at some point was, why does Warren put so much R&D into their products? It's because your R&R depends on it. And I thought that. <laughs> so, and it's true. I mean, That's a good we, one, we, yeah. We test the crap out of our products. I mean, test, test. We have an in-house test, test lab. Everything is tested to like a, a failure. Uh, and we, you know, we test other product, other, other, other you know, we benchmark other competitors and all that stuff and um yeah it's a it's a neat neat company to work for definitely sounds like it and you also don't want one of your own employees calling out on monday because they couldn't get out of uh out of a little stuck on sunday that's so. true there's a there is there's <laughs> no get not homework. getting into work my yeah. my old boss used to live right around the corner from me and he would say if i can get if i can get in then i'm picking you up so <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is kind of a neat deal. So this is the it's demo boys. Do. They're based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and they use our Pulsol. So Pulsol is one of our utility products. It's got 15 feet of wire rope and it's rated to a thousand pounds. This is one of the only products that we make that is rated for both winching, which is a horizontal pulling and hoisting, which is a vertical lifting. Mm-hmm. So uh, these guys, uh, they, this one, they're taking out an old safe out of a basement. And uh, they use the Pulsol, which is available either in a, in a corded 110 version or a cordless 
24 volt version. And they used it to pull this safe out of a basement. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I saw that one. I was like, I'm definitely sharing that one. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, and for the listener, it is a big ass safe that's just moving it along as this pulls all just tugs it along. And there's not, every time it looks like it's moving, there is not a person close to that thing. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so that was cool. Yeah. I never saw this coming. What's, um, What's the least expected circumstance in which you've seen one of the worn products used? Ooh. Because that would have caught me off guard from any direction. That I can talk about? Probably, um, <laughs> probably, okay, I say that because people do a lot of things that I would love to share on our social media, but like, yeah, the lawyers don't think they'd like that. <laughs> seeing, seeing somebody use it as a zip line, you know, that kind of thing. What? Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, a quick story. Um, I had uh, somebody about 10 years ago, I get it, I, I'm at my desk and I, it comes up on caller ID with like a European number and I'm like, pick it up. And it was somebody from Top Gear, the show from Top Gear UK. Yeah, okay. And they're like, oh yeah, we're, we're looking to send the boys, which of course, you know, the whole crew yep. from Top Gear mm-hmm. over to the US and have them do some crazy things in Jeeps. I'm like, oh, okay. And so we're looking to get a couple of winches. I said, okay, well, what are you looking for? What are you looking to do? And he says, well, he's like, so what we're like to do is get to a canyon and pull the rope across the canyon, double it back to through the, through the Jeep's roll cage back to a tree and then suspend the, the Jeep over the canyon and bring it across hanging from the roll cage. And I said, yeah, I'm not giving you a winch to do that. No, right. you know, that's, that's like totally not safe. I can hear the lawyers keeling over. Right. And then he says, well, what about, what about if we run the line under the vehicle and we suspend the Jeep on top of it? Oh, my God. Like, I'm like, no. <laughs> so that, that never happened that I know of. I don't think so, I've seen that one either. I that's but the most I will top tell you, thing ever. I will tell you that a shockingly high amount of people use winches for uh, tree removal and yard work. Like, I think a lot of people, you know, they immediately think a worn winch and they think, oh, getting stuck in the mud or helping somebody out of a snowbank. But I, I myself have used the winch to pull out trees and shrubs. And mm-hmm. I pulled a 130 foot tall tree that fell out of our neighbor's house during an ice storm last year off of a car. Uh, had a double line and 8,000 pound winch, uh, which gets you an effective 16,000 pound pulling capacity. Uh, but we we get a lot of that um but yeah it, it's it's amazing how many people use them for yard work or tree removal or that kind of thing right yeah, wow look at that yeah so at your story reminded me of the grand tour episode when they were in namibia and they suspended these things to cross yeah. something and i they had to build their own rig with grand tour mm-hmm. money they mm-hmm. didn't use a winch but that thing looks like it's got a winch on the front of it, actually. It, it does. Yeah, a little yellow hook there. Yeah. Could be a worn yeah. 9.5 RC. Who knows? So Yeah, well, that's what we're going to say it is. <laughs> sure, I'm for it. No one's telling us no right now. So. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> anyway, sorry. That made me think of that one. Sorry. Yeah, no, around the house uses like that kind of stuff. You never think about it. But, you know, it, also seen plenty of people use winch to pull dead rigs onto a trailer. Yes, even absolutely. Winch, even if the winch isn't part of the trailer or part of the vehicle being towed. Right. And it's way easier than a come along. If you've ever used a come yes. along where you're really. back and forth and back and forth <laughs> and they're hard to so that, with a, ro- that, with a chain. Oh, ooh, ooh, just, yeah, I think I'd rather just get stuck. Which the, there, um, there is an article <laughs> on Hooniverse talking about how the high lift jack is a come along is one of the worst things ever. Oh, Jeff God. Read that I one. mean, <laughs> you'll get your cardio in for sure, yeah, but exactly. it's a, uh, it is a, yeah. a much harder, harder way to work. Um, uh, you know, that pulls all that you showed in that demo boys video, this handheld come along is, and that's what it is. It's, it was an answer to how do we automate a come along? So. Hmm. And those guys are all over your social. Here's another one. Yeah. You can Posted see them doing a couple both. Things. Yep. God, so there we go. Heavy. Yes. Yeah. We, uh, when we released polls all, I don't know, about 10 years ago, and they've started to come into their own uh, a few years oh. back and see them in. Yeah, stop. <laughs> so, uh, 
but yeah, people use them in, um, I just shared a, a video out today of uh, a, a woodworking company that was loading a 17 foot kitchen island onto a trailer with the pulls all. So it's not just truck stuff. You know, we don't make mm. just truck stuff. Mm. Although we make a lot of truck stuff. 17 so, foot kitchen island, that is a, an enormous piece of kitchen. <laughs> that is, that is, that person's got a big kitchen. I'll tell you that. So they've already loaded it on here. But uh, they're going to use the pulls all to let it down, like just hmm. like that. So, oh man, uh, yeah, our Facebook page actually has them a video of them loading it as well. So, and this is the corded version, as you can see. So, if mm. you're somewhere with power, that's a great option. So, nice freaking I, trailer too. I, yes. Yeah, yeah, it was it's a nice kitchen that. island too. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> it's nicer than my house. <laughs> yeah, except my kitchen is not 17 feet long. Yeah, my no. tool shed, my shed isn't is 17 feet long. I don't think so. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> Mine's, I think, eight by ten. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really big island. <laughs> that is a huge island. Okay, so so, you know, we're talking about not automotive stuff, but our audience is off road and it is sure. automotive. So why don't you hit us with some of the critical do's and don'ts of recovery using oh, sure. products? Oh yeah, I've seen some sketchy, sketchy oh. things. Oh, me too. Me too. I've been with Warren since 2006, and I've seen a lot of things that uh, can't be unseen in terms of uh, winching practices. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I always tell everybody is slow down. Like, okay. I get it. You're on the trail. You're stuck. The, there's 15 rigs behind you, and you're, you're sweating, and you're embarrassed, but you got to slow down. Slow down because mistakes happen when you go quickly. Mm -hmm. So always remember to put your winching gloves on. I don't care if they're worn gloves. I'd like them to be, but if you just wear a good set of leather gloves, that's great. Um, because steel or synthetic, you can get rope burn. You can cut up your hands. So put your winching gloves on. Uh, follow best practices whenever you can. You know, don't exceed. Don't don't ex uh, exceed. You know, like I was mentioning, having the wrong amount of wraps on the drum, uh, uh, that kind of thing. But even before you go out. I can't tell you how many people come up to me at shows and they're very proud to have our product, which I'm, uh, which always makes me proud, yeah. but they say that, gosh, I hope I never have to use it. And I, and I always say, well, just make sure you know how to use it when the time comes, like go pull your car around, go pull your Jeep around the, the driveway, you know, hook up a, hook up a, the line to your, to your, you know, your wife's truck or your husband's truck and just learn how it works. It's like anything else, you know, I mean, I, I don't care what it is. If it's, you know, you're not going to pick up a guitar and know how to play it the first time, you yeah. know, uh, any, anything like that. Uh, so learn how it works. Spend some time and familiarize yourself with it. It's actually an exceedingly simple product. It's a motor and a spool with some rope. So, but just, <laughs> just make sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. So we have a, a guide to winch, basic winching techniques. that's available for download on our website. It's a quick read, um, gives you some basic stuff. Yep. And then uh, <laughs> look at that. That's mandatory. amazing. It's, it should be mandatory. Really. It should be mandatory. If you own yeah. a winch, right. you should have to, it's yes. like your waiver to actually use the thing. Not exactly. lying about a spool and some rope. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, yeah. It is a, it is at its core, a very simple product. Yeah. So um, this is our power sports version of it. We may, we offer a truck version. It's essentially the same guide, but with different, different illustrations. So, you know, you've got a clutch on one side that's going to allow you to free spool or pull the line out with any, without any tension on it. And then you rig it up and learn how to learn basic rigging techniques, learn the difference between a single line pull and a double line pull and what those things can do. You can use a host of accessories too. There's something called a snatch block or a pulley block. That allows you to change winching direction. I can also allow you to uh, increase uh, the pulling capacity. It's it, it's through a mechanical advantage. Your your mm -hmm. your forty five hundred pound winch is not suddenly turned into a nine thousand pound winch. <laughs> but what you're doing is you're using mechanical advantage yeah. to effectively double that pulling strength. But of course, you're, there are ca caveats with that. It, it, it's high school physics. Just yeah, high school physics. off roadified. Yeah. It's the, exactly. the introduction to simple machines is the way I think yes. of it. Yeah, like yep. very well put. Very well put, Chris. It's <laughs> it's an introduction to simple machines, and then learning about those those uh, accessories, shackles, chains, or straps. When do you use this strap? When do you use that strap? You don't want to use a chain to try to yank somebody out because there's no no give. You want to use a recovery <laughs> strap. Yeah, talk about 
way things can go very wrong very quickly. Very, very metal wrong. on metal on metal. Yeah. Yes. And so while the product, a winch itself, is a simple tool, knowing how to use that uh, can, you know, there's best practices. And there are things that have to do with safety. You know, where do you stand? Do you stand in front of it? Do you stand behind it? Where do you stand? Learning those things, yes, 90 away. Degrees, 90 away. degrees yes. away, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so learning those things, uh, you suddenly realize, well, there's actually more to this than I thought. But the, the thing I just can't stress more enough is to slow down and try to think logically, uh, you know, when, when you do this. I, I've, I've seen people try to, you know, they pull out their way underrated shackle that they got at home depot it's like this big you know yeah. and i'm like Amazon i special. don't want you to pull up a, a, a six thousand pound vehicle with that you know mm -hmm. i know it's rated to the, you know the shackles rated like six thousand pounds and they're going to pull a six thousand pound vehicle out that's completely high centered like that safety factor might not be there so use the appropriate using the uh, appropriate accessories and rigging stuff all of our stuff is is rated right so uh you get one of our worn epic shackles Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, that's going to have a nine, nine ton working load limit. Right. So we, we make it simple and say it's for use with winches, 18,000 pounds and under it's got a braking strength of like 72,000 pounds, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, uh, making sure that you're not using like an ATV shackle to pull out your Ford excursion, you know <laughs> uh, you can go backwards. You can use we it went the a, opposite a, way. Right. It's, it's okay to use that big shackle on a small vehicle, but you don't want to use the small shackle on the big vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this goes for ATV, UTV, truck, industrial, anything like that. Knowing, knowing your ratings and familiarizing yourself with the product is ex exceptionally important. Mm -hmm. What do you, so relay to the listeners, what you relayed to me about what the weight rating of the winch you're installing on your vehicle should be. Yeah. So on a, when you're talking about a, a truck winch, you are, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, want to go gross vehicle weight multiplied by 1.5. And that's going to get you your minimum pulling capacity. Okay. So that doesn't mean you can't go up, but we don't suggest you go down. Right. So, so, uh, so that's how you would do it for like a truck or an SUV, something like that for power sports. If you've got a UTV, we generally recommend 4,500 pounds um, or 5,500 pounds. Uh, it used to be that some of the more uh, popular like sport UTVs wouldn't take a 4,500. So we would tell them to put a 35 in there. But mm -hmm. now we offer a product called the Axon 45RC. And that's actually a short drum, narrow winch that pulls 4,500 pounds. So it's got a little bit less rope, 27 feet versus 50 feet but it'll fit in a lot of those smaller uh, uh, sport UTVs that have uh, less, less yeah. room in there. And then if you've Very got a, limited. right. And if you've got a, uh, uh, an ATV 25 or a 35 is generally going to be great. If it's a real big, heavy UTV, like, or excuse me, ATV, like you're, uh, you know, you're using it for hunting or something around the farm and it's, it's a, you know, 800 or, you know, something real big, uh, a 3,500 is going to be the, great. Uh, the player sportsman 1000 mm -hmm. s i think it is weighs 980 pounds wow yeah you don't want that sucker flipping over on you so no, um, no that, that it's, it's crazy because the <laughs> original player's razor weighed less than that oh <laughs> no. well you know the funny thing is is we have an old ranger at work and it's got to be from like 2000 and Five, maybe okay i think it's been there as long as i've been there that's and it's farm just, rig yeah yeah <laughs> it's amazing how utvs went from basically lifted golf carts to this <laughs> own breed of high performance <laughs> thing that it is now Are i they... had a co-worker with lifted golf cart by the way so I'm literally writing an article about that right now the oh size you really yeah. open on my computer it is called evolution of utvs oh yeah it's because... it's incredible i look and you don't have to go so far back like if you go back to 2005 on the automotive side, you're like, oh yeah, there's a 05 F-150 or there's a Jeep, you know, yeah. or whatever like that. But you open, you look at a 2004, 2005 uh, Ranger or a Mule or something like that. You're like, Rhino man, like, oh yeah. Yeah, you're just like, man, time has not been kind to the old UTVs, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So my, my only side-by-side -side experience, they were not called side-by-sides. 
Mm-hmm. It was it was a John Deere Gator. Oh yeah, oh, and, it, and it was Gators. a and it was a Kubota <laughs> variant. Like yeah. it was. Oh yeah, that's what they were. Like that was <laughs> yeah. And I it's the kind of thing you'd see at the state. The like, yeah, great. yeah, yeah. It's the kind of thing that I used to see at the Minnesota State Fair. They were like on balloon tires with knobbies on them, and they held yeah. the trash from dumpster to dumpster or whatever. Yeah. You know? So, we, but we, uh, yeah, I remember seeing the, our first sort of built up one that we had. I think it was a, I can't remember if it was a rhino or what it was, but uh, you know, we had it at Moab, and it's this big, tall thing, and it's got this kind of goofy roll bar. You look at it now, and it looks like this goofy roll bar and all this stuff. And, and nowadays they're you know, low slung. They've got probably more horsepower than every car that I have in my driveway combined, which <laughs> if you know me, that's kind of funny, but anyway, um, well, you went through the list for me earlier. So oh, I, I, yeah, missed I, the list. I missed the list. What, so what is in your garage? Oh, so, um, so, good. so I have our little commuter, which is our Toyota Yaris that's lowered and sway bars and all that stuff. Bought it new in 2007 anyway um that's the commuter that's the high uh, the high performance go part go kart commuter um high power and then high yeah and then i have a, a 1991 mitsubishi pajero xp which is a jdm turbo diesel 2.5 liter uh intercooled what where did that come from japan <laughs> well yeah i know that but that's <laughs> awesome that's oh my god we end up talking about the Pajeros so often. Um, oh, and the okay. Pajero Evos and all of that yeah. stuff. Like well, that is that, so, that's pinnacle because of four rad. Jeff's Montero is why we end up with. <laughs> we were talking about it before Jeff had his Montero. In all fairness, is it is it four door or two door? So it's two door, and okay. I have a ninety two Pajero XR two, which is also two door turbo diesel. I just oh put God. a new engine in that one, which is a, a brand new Hyundai D four BF, which is a basically a, it's a new version of the so that's when we first got it it does not look like that if you, Wait, anymore is this so, your actual truck yeah that's actually me yeah i run crankshaftculture.com too with dude that's so great because this is just a google search i love when oh, yeah. stuff happens on this yeah show. yeah so if you google that's alcan great. if you google alcan 5000 pajero oh, man. we ran the my wife and I ran the 2020 alcan 5000 which is a road rally that goes up to the arctic ocean in february yeah and uh Wait, in february we, that's awesome yeah that so sounds awful we use it, it was, yeah the 42 below zero is the coldest <coughs> air temperature we saw oh my god you said so, in 2000 2020 yeah sorry oh my gosh that's what I and meant. uh i may have said 2000 but so uh so we took that pajero um uh, which was outfitted uh so that was a still slightly different than that that's, oh, way, that's a little bit more like that now ever. That was up in Canada. I took that photo up in Canada. Um, oh my God, that so, keeps the holes in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> so then we we have it's currently. Did you just have the white wheels or kind of silverish? No, mine's got uh, mine's got black wheels black. too. Hmm. Oh oh, you know what? So that rig that we took. If you Google Alcan five thousand Pajero, mm-hmm. um, it should come up. And we took that on. It was a six. That ended up being over six thousand miles. We had a long range America fuel, uh, extra fuel tank, aux tank on there. We have uh, ARB bull bar, uh, Warren M8000 winch on it. Oregon plate, so I'm hoping it's yours. Friend yep. of show, long range America. Yeah, that's that's us. But that's, uh, again, not the Alcan 5001, but it's okay. <laughs> light Force is uh, on there too. Yeah, we got Light Force Genesis on there. And then um, the ARB bumper, custom sliders. Are those um, ridge grapplers? Ranchers. Are those 1552? Uh, Yes. So those are Ridge Grapplers. <laughs> and then let's see, Alcan 5000 Pajero. Let's see That's if I can so the link. Maybe yeah, I, need, I am. I need to put Alcan and 5000 closer together. I'm maybe. the biggest yeah. sucker for two door Japanese four by fours. I'll um, throw it in the, ch- I'll throw it in the, in the chat here. Okay. Um, let's see. Now that I've had this GX, I am patiently waiting for a two door Prado to be available stateside. See, but, can I post the? No, I can't. Let me grab the. Let me grab the URL here. Uh, but yeah, so so we've got that, and then I've got the a ninety two that we put this new um, that we put this new Hyundai engine in, which is a. a, a I just went ahead and dropped that in there, and so um, and then the ninety two has a thirty three inch BFG KM threes. And then uh, 1552 wheels on it. Uh, oh, it is that one. Engine. Okay, sorry. How do you like the KM3s? I love them. Yeah, okay. So this is the 91 that we took sure. on the Alcan 5000. FJ that's, Cruiser wheels. That's Those the, were FJ Cruiser wheels because we went to a 235 85 
2317 uh, mm -hmm. uh, studded uh, exo grappler for the uh, Alcan 5000. So, um, but yeah, this, uh, we have a Webasto Thermotop Evo coolant heater in it. So it'll circulate, it'll use the diesel in the tank to warm the coolant. So it would start at 40 below zero. So we had to have the custom, uh, we had to have the, uh, terrible. <laughs> the wheels, uh, center bores opened up because it uses a 108 millimeter center bore and the Toyotas are 106. Mm -hmm. So, and then the max racks on the top run a rack. Um, we had dual Optima, we have dual Optima batteries in there. Um, Shieldman heated seats. Um, oh man. Yeah. That's we a hell uh, of a build. Yeah. 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 So it's, it, there's so many cool. stickers on the window for such a small truck. <laughs> I've heard good things about those Shieldman seats too. I, I haven't seen oh, them in person, but I've heard very good things. Some people are starting to throw spoiled. them in the 80s. How, how are spoiled. these your lower back pain? <laughs> amazing as somebody who had who just suffered a back injury they're amazing oh no uh, yeah what'd you have a uh, slip disc so okay so um, this was on the ice roads up at uh up near um inuvik in uh the northwest territories do we, so, we have had a string of guests lately who have had amazing trips we've also had a string of guests lately who have all had tread magazine features <laughs> that's true well brian was one of the guests so <laughs> yeah it's, it's yeah. Kind of his show, but. yeah i'll show you and i'll let me drop a, a link to um our other pajero here in the chat oh my god that, that looks so desolate. cold oh, oh it was it was unbelievable that was right before we almost hit a wolf so <laughs> oh that's fun yeah that was uh that was something else we came uh we stopped at the arctic circle where i actually got to use oh. my winch because i tried to drive through a snowbank <laughs> and uh, we came around the corner and there's this giant freaking wolf right in the middle of the, of the road. And it was like, oh, my God. Anyway. Oh, oh my God. So, that's so no, good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Lots of stories on the Alcan. So and then I just dropped the link into uh, the 92. Uh, we call this one the rally tractor. And uh, it came with the factory rally art, Mitsubishi rally art uh, decals on the sides. Oh, my God. So, um, yeah. And then my other vehicle is a 1994 Mitsubishi Delica Space Gear. Yeah. And uh, so that one we call the travel track. They're all called, they're all tractor themed because they all sound like that. So here's our 92 <laughs> uh, Pajero. Those are a 33, uh, those are 255, uh, 85, 16 KM3s. I love the KM3s. They're super quiet for a mud train tire. Mm -hmm. They're excellent in everything I've ever had them in. Um, sand, snow, mud. I can't complain. I mean, I get, like I said, they're the quietest mud train I've ever owned. So interesting yeah i had km2s on my first forerunner and they, they were oh, okay. good they just by the time they had like twenty thousand miles on them they were unbearably loud yeah 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 so but um, you know given it's a mud terrain they, those were 255 80 16s i think okay yeah 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 so um that's a stance it, on that it thing it does that look really killer. good oh thank you man. thank you yeah it's a lot of fun and it i just put a straight pipe on it it's good. So it's, it's quiet <laughs> on the, on the highway, but it's got this really mean turbo whistle. I just passed emissions today with it too. So I'm Woo! quite happy. So, um, yeah, anyway. Uh, and then, uh, it's very Australian of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see if I can find, uh, I think I got, uh, so is your fleet entirely Mitsubishi except for the Yaris? Uh, I just bought a 98 Honda CRV just as a, like a let's go places kind of, <laughs> that's a Toyota slogan, isn't it? Um, but uh, as, <laughs> yeah, as kind you of did a, yourself <laughs> on that one. As, yeah, as kind of a go everywhere on the highway kind of thing. So like uh -oh. we have this, we have this lowered Yaris. We've got these jacked up turbo diesels that I don't really want to put a ton of mileage on. It's not even mm. that. It's I don't want to get them salty. So when we drove back to Wisconsin, I did not want to get them super salty. Um, yeah, fluid film seems real nice I've, this time of year. I've got poor fifteen under all all three of oh, these yeah. vehicles. Um, yeah, how and much so, of a pain in the ass was what, it put on? Is the Yaris I'll white? Ask the mechanic because I paid him to do it. I wasn't going to do that. So fair enough. Fair enough. Um, let's see if I can find this. Andy, is the Yaris white? It is with kind of red orange wheels. It, yes, it was. I I just swapped over to uh, yeah. So that's what it used to look like. Okay. I recently just swapped over to some four spoke um, Votex Lorados, which are a German wheel that were an option on Volkswagens. 
I reviewed a uh, I reviewed BF Goodrich's Advantage uh, control wheels for gear junking, so uh, tires. So um, are they yeah. kind of a silver white wheel? Yeah. Uh, yes. You even spell that. I don't know. I just had a Google image search with Crankshaft Culture and Yaris. So <laughs> I just... yeah. So that one's got. Um, that it one's got. Does uh, look like a go kart. <laughs> yes, and it drives like a go kart. Um, also here, I'll, I've got uh, some. My wife and I co-wrote this uh, article for Tread Magazine. I'll drop this one in here. Um, this is going to show the uh, the Delica. Do the Tread subscription already? It's like five so, shows in a row. So you, you want the subscription? I just want Brian to let me write for him. <laughs> I do. I do. I don't have anything to write about. Oh, it's so so scary. our our Delica Space Gear is a 2.8 liter 4M40 turbo diesel. And uh, then that white one is our old uh, star wagon. That was, we called the space tractor. And, um, and then the, the green one is called the, the travel, travel tractor because they all have diesel sounding tractor engines. So, <laughs> but uh, so this was a, a piece that talked about the differences between the L400. So that's, uh, that's it. So that's got a coastal off-road bumper, a warranty okay. on eight in the front of it, some light force uh, venoms up front. Weird. It's a, a 15 by seven steel wheel on KO2s, the Goodrich KO2s. And there's a, a rear swing away tire carry and all that stuff as well. So, um, and a hood scoop. What year uh, is it? The hood scoop, that's a 94. So that feeds okay. the top mount intercooler. That's, uh, that's so cool. Yeah. So we've got the uh, Rock 40 lights from um, Light Force and the bumper as well. There. Coastal, Rancho. So. Coastal off road is that, are they BC? Or they're Canada, right? Uh, that's correct. Yes, they're uh, located in, I believe, White Rock, British Columbia, or Delta. I can't remember the two. So, but uh, that was our first. Uh, well, there's me. Uh, <laughs> there was a. Uh, that was uh, in the dunes at uh, uh, Florence, Oregon. So I was out there helping a rebel rally crew with some winch training. Ah. But, um, yeah. So dare, dare we ask who? Uh, let's see. They didn't compete this year together, but it was. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember what their name was. We've had but anyway, one of our guests. Oh yeah, uh, it was Tanya White, and not uh, not she won this year, uh, oh. or was top three anyway. Oh. But uh, um, and Judy Russell. But uh, no. uh, so we, I was yeah. in New Zealand in 20, 2016 and and my wife's godmother who lives there had a Dalica uh, uh, Star Wagon, and it was kind of a beater, and we were walking through the parking lot to get to their vehicle after we got, got to New Zealand. And I was like, Oh, I'm like, looking at this Delica. And we walked towards it. And they unlock it. I'm like, you guys have a Delica. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So cool. And they're sort of like, I'm like a kid that just saw a Lamborghini for the first yeah, time. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're just like, this them. thing's, and they're just like, this thing is a total shit box, you know? <laughs> and I, they're like, do you want to drive it? I was like, yeah. Yes, but I've never driven a, a right-hand drive vehicle in a right-hand drive com uh, country yet. So, but we did. And uh, I like immediately fell in love with it. I'm like, someday I'm going to get one. And I didn't expect to buy one six months after Amazing. coming back to the U.S. But one showed up that was right around the corner from Warren. So I went and looked at it at my lunch break. And I thought, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not you know, just going to look at it, right? So I went and looked at it. And it had a fair bit of corrosion on the underbelly, which is super common for these things. And uh, anyway, we bought it, fell in love with it. it. The rust got bad enough that we decided to, rather than fix it, sell it. And then we got the, the Star Wagon or the uh, Space Gear, which is much more civilized. So The Space Gears thing, are awesome. The crazy thing about Delica in photos online is mm -hmm. that it could be anywhere in the world right. that those pictures are taken. And, right. you know, that could be, this picture could be, you know, like africa or yeah namibia china right yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that could be pictures, uh, that could be japan or yeah. it could be seattle yeah, colorado maybe but yes yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah this is so we uh my wife um she uh she wrote a story for the new york times on um uh driving this van from florida to oregon during a, during the pandemic so we bought this vehicle in, in fort myers florida and drove it back to Oregon in May of 2020. Uh, it was all phone stock. And uh, we slept at truck stops and didn't get out of the vehicle basically except to fuel up and get food. So uh, she wrote a story about that. Um, 
with uh, with featuring this vehicle. So it's kind of kind of a neat thing. But please send the link to that. I would really like to read that. Yeah, you bet, you bet. So um, yeah, we uh, right now our fleet is all our four wheel drive fleet, not including the Honda CRV, is all all Mitsubishi. But I've owned Suzuki before. I had a <clears throat> uh, sidekick that I loved called the Teal Terror, which also had a, had a little bit of a cult following. So yeah, there it is. The Teal Terror? Yeah, the Teal Terror was our 95 Suzuki sidekick. So, ah. And then um, that went all over the West. Uh, I wrote a, a series for our other website we have called Subcompact Culture, which was about um, around the West 90 horsepower or 95 horsepower. Mm. So we went all over the place. But this, this, this article she wrote um, uh, talks all about the different COVID cases in the different states as we pass through uh, and then the challenges. And um, here's Bert, Bert the bunny with his COVID mask on. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Most famous so, stuffed animal in our house. Okay. So. so so you've had, you've owned some eclectic stuff between you, yourself and your wife. And right. obviously you're surrounded by it, you know, just being in the industry. What's a, right. what's your white whale? What's your like holy grail thing that that is still floating out there that you haven't gotten your hands on yet? Uh, well, the holy grail thing that I, I can't get my hands on is a, a new Suzuki Jimny. Uh, I went to Iceland in 2019 and we went Man. to Iceland pretty much specifically to rent a Suzuki Jimny and drive around. <laughs> and we did, and it was a five speed and all that stuff. And I'll, I'll tell you what, it's as good as all the automotive press has said. Really? Oh, it's just, it's that. just so good in every way. Dude. Like, please, like I plead, like I know Suzuki has relationships with both Toyota and Mitsubishi. So like, please bring it over somehow. But anyway, yeah. just um, call her I'm like, four. Just oh, RAV2. There two. Was, I don't care. Yeah. RAV4 that, that was that so, size. Yeah. I know. I almost bought one of those recently. And a spare actually. tire on the back. Oh, so good. So the 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 modern Jimny is my the modern Jimny is my unobtainium. That's the one thing that I can't get that I do want. In terms Legally. of like okay. what yeah. would I want <laughs> that I like what would I get? Like if I if I could get whatever right now. I mean, honestly, the Delica was was has always been what I wanted. Um, I've got the the two short wheelbase. I one thing I would like, and this is completely like anticlimactic, is I'd still like a eighty nine or ninety uh, Montero short wheelbase with the V six and the five speed. There's mm. one for sale right down the road for me, but I can't. I'm I'm running out of space in my driveway. So what is what does Lynn Woodward have? What's hers? Uh, uh, she's got a 80 series or 70 series Land Cruiser, doesn't she? No, no, no she's, no, no. she's, she's, got, she's a got a Montero. Two door Montero. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's it's right. Blue or am I making that up? No, it's blue. It's you're blue? right. You're, you're crushing this so far. It's been a while since she was on the show. So I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten um, exactly the details, but I, I know she has one. It's okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wasn't that's sure a first the image gen. that I Yeah, posted. that's. Yeah. That's the vehicle. So most of them okay. were most of them were the two point six. Well, I should say, um, I've written a lot about JDM four wheel drive, so I, I I can rattle this off. Like I used to make fun of people who were like, "How do they know all these sports stats?" You know, like God, <laughs> you know. Right. Like, oh and, God. Anyway, same. I'm that way with with cars. So um, from eighty four through eighty eight, uh, the two door Monteros and Pajeros were available with a two point six liter carbureted four cylinder. Um, in the 89, uh, they put the three liter V6 with fuel injection in the two doors and the four doors. And um, I've never driven one. And I, I think that would be a really cool, cool rig to have. Because um, I, oh, I have this like addiction to horrible things that need maintenance all the time. But um, honestly, our Mitsubishi's have been yeah. super duper reliable. I've never, they've never treated me wrong. I can't mm. complain about that. I grew up with Mitsubishi though. Like my, my you know, we, I came home from the hospital in the 79 Dodge Champ, which was basically just a rebadge from Mitsubishi. Mm -hmm. But my, you know, we've had everything from, my first car was a 92 Mitsubishi Expo LRV. Most people don't even remember what those were. I have absolutely no idea what that is. Yeah, they, they were sold in the United States as the Plymouth Colt Vista, the Eagle Summit Wagon and the ah. Expo LRV. Uh, mine was a little 1.8 liter, 113 horsepower, five speed front wheel drive, but they were Bro. available with a 2.4 liter we uh, talked all wheel about drive. Them. So. Um, yeah, so, uh, we've had Mitsubishi all the time. I, you know, I just had, we had eclipses, we had, 
Montero Sports, all kinds of stuff. And my mom mm-hmm. has a 2015, Montero Sport. I remember that. 2015 Outlander Sport right now. So, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. So um, yeah, there's just, I don't know. Pajero Evo. Yeah. That, yeah, that was my first car except in blue. So. <laughs> did you did you see Mitsubishi's news today? I did the uh, the rally art uh, um, Outlander concept. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, so it, it's interesting. I think a lot of people were like crossing their fingers and jumping on one foot and doing a rain dance to try to make sure that it would be, you know, oh. not an eclipse cross, but it, it, it is. Um, but it's a different honestly. company. You know, people probably did the same thing, you know, when the Model T came out, you know, or Model A came out. It's already, you know, it's not the same. It's not True. the same. True. Um, Mitsubishi is, has, has, you know, people always go, well, you killed the Evo and blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, you weren't going to go buy an Evo anyway. So. <laughs> quite true <laughs> and that shows because there were still a couple evos for sale new like three years like it was like 2018 and 15 yeah. was the last model year i'm um, a mitsubishi legacy car owner and i'm here to say that mitsubishi legacy owners are the worst like they, you know <laughs> you killed the 3000 gt mm-hmm. yeah because that was selling so well right. you know yeah. mm-hmm. but anyway uh, it's a different company with different aspirations. I'm glad to see them bringing the rally art thing back. We'll see mm-hmm. what they do with it. Uh, if the future is electric and hybrid, and we'll just say it back electric again. Um, you know, Mitsubishi does a lot of things electricity with electricity outside mm-hmm. of automotive. So yeah, we'll see. They haven't done company. anything yet. So, but we'll see. I've got my fingers crossed. I'm an underdog yeah. supporter, which is clear by every vehicle that I drive. <laughs> so but, <it's> like- <laughs> your whole fleet yeah my whole fleet is is just a bunch of underdogs so uh but yeah i don't know there's so many you know i I have a list of cars that i want someday and my wife gives me shit about it all the time because she's like you want you want every you there's like you want one of everything like "Mm." yeah i'm just glad i'm not the only one with a list (laughs) no i got no i got a list you know but like some of my stuff too i also run i haven't done much with it lately but i i started out blogging on a site called uh subcompact culture which is all about small cars and that's really that's oh, like yeah. when i went to my first media event and and all that stuff and so um i one of my bucket list cars to own is a uh suzuki swift gti or gt okay. you yeah. know one three one point three liter double yeah. overhead cam uh i also and i'm not sure i want to own one yet but i definitely want to drive a, a chevy sprint turbo with a little three cylinder mm-hmm. one liter intercooled always wanted to drive one of those wasn't somebody kicking one of those around one of the wasn't it um oh god what's that podcast that was like tangentially related to the hooniverse podcast and cam and dubbed uh drive what didn't one of the driving wild awesome guys have one of those i have no idea i don't know i don't know if you guys know it's very radwood i know uh i don't know if you guys know barry loman he's a uh corvette guy but he does a lot of like standing mile and all that stuff but anyway he he and I have traded stories. He drove one. He said it was you know, crazy at, at, at speed. So, but they don't weigh anything. So, uh, and I like all cars. Like my, my mantra. Yes. Yes. I love yeah, the hood scoops on these. Air goes in here. So, <laughs> right. Uh, exactly I'm, what that I'm is. A, I'm a, I'm as eclectic as it gets with cars. Like people think, oh, you're a Mitsubishi guy. I'm not. Like I love all cars. You know, Crankshaft Culture, which is my wife and my website you know, we believe that like, if there's one thing that unites car people, it's horsepower. We're united by horsepower. That's a hashtag that we use. And that every vehicle is an adventure, another hashtag that we use. And, you know, you can really do amazing things in any vehicle. And you know what, if you are, if you are passionate about cars or trucks, then we're cool. Like, that's awesome. And I mean, like, listen, I have like, I have cars that aren't my favorites and that I would never own. Hey, look at that guy. Anyway, (laughs) So uh, rider slash yeah, model. <laughs> What's that? Rider slash model. <laughs> the yeah. slashy. Yes. So um, and yeah, so there my wife was in the Rebel Rally in that in the yeah. uh, in that uh, Volkswagen. Mm-hmm. And this is my friend uh, Tuan. He writes uh, he had he, he just bought Sob a second story. sob. Oh no. So I know Slippery slow. Uh, oh it, yeah. Next absolutely. thing you know, he'll have 14 of them. Yeah, he's got a, some interesting cars. He's got a, a Suzuki Carry K truck, yeah. um, and then oh, he's got awesome. uh, the two um, the two Sobs. He's got a BMW. I can't even keep the three thirty convertible. That car. There it is. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, he's you know he's tuning and all that stuff. It's a blue BMW convertible. I yes, that's what lowered, he has. Lowered blue. Yeah. 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 I don't know. And uh, so 
we're just into all kinds of car, cars, yeah. trucks, travel. You know, my wife and I love to travel, which so like the last couple of years have been like clawing at the clawing at the ceiling. You know, hundred percent understand. I hear you. Just, oh, I hear you, mentioned, you mentioned but, Iceland. We, Ross and I dude. both had trips canceled to Iceland. So oh, <laughs> I was on a phone oh. call today with the UTV driver guys planning and and Jeff ATV rider planning our Moab trip for March, which is the trip that I was supposed to do in March of 2020. Mm. Yeah, so, it's um, Iceland go. is amazing. And um, I, I need a do over on Iceland. We were there for nine days. We circumnavigated the country in a chimney nice. and uh, camped along the way. We, we tent camped the whole thing. And uh, we had just abominable weather. And do uh, roads. Yep, we did some of the F roads. Um, tip to anybody going to Iceland and wants to do F roads: make sure that your rental car company covers you on ice F roads because some of them do not. So mm. we rented from <clears throat> Blue B L U E, mm-hmm. and they rent chimneys and stuff like that. And buy the uh, buy the sand and ash insurance too, just in case. So just in case. We talked is... a little bit about super volcanoes. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, Iceland. <laughs> Good callback. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it is volcanic land. It is. But um, yeah, I was uh, admittedly, we did some amazing things in Iceland. I was not a great traveling companion during some of this because <laughs> I was cold and wet and angry sometimes. So, um, but you know, monsoon, yeah. you know, monsoon rains <laughs> at, at, you know, 45 degrees out. Yeah. Anyway, Iceland isn't, is amazing though. Wait, that rain in 45 degrees, isn't that home? That, it, yes, right. but this was July in Iceland. So, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, but what do you expect from a country with ice in the name? You know, I mean, like palm trees and stuff? No. Yeah. So, but oh, that's awesome. That's yeah, funny. highly recommended. Got to go back. Still on the list. Need mm-hmm. to go. <laughs> yeah, right. God. Well, sweet. Uh, I'm going to start to wrap up the show. Sure. Because uh, it's been a hot minute and Ross is approaching uh, pumpkin status over there on the pumpkin East Coast. Pumpkin status. Yeah, <laughs> I, got, I got something ready for Jeff and I got to finish by the time I fall asleep. So Sweet. Well, you can rate and review this show on iTunes. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, Andy, what social would you like to push? Because there's a lot available to you. There, there is. So uh, Warren.com is where you can find all the goods from there. We're also at Warren Industries on Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. And then mm-hmm. uh, we're Facebook.com slash Warren fans. My personal stuff, if you want to follow along with the crazy stuff that we do, we're Crankshaft Culture. We're at Crankshaft Culture on Instagram and Facebook. We also have a YouTube channel. Um, you can also follow me personally and see what I'm eating for dinner at uh, Andy underscore Lilienthal. Good luck spelling. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like it does sound the way it's spelled. It is exactly, and I'm be- I beg our IT department to give me Andy L at Warren.com, and they just won't do it. So, so it's, that's, for me, like I you. always request first initial last name because I'm Chris, and my last name starts with a T. So if they do right. first name last, I'm Christ, and I don't ever want to get emails for Christ. <laughs> so I always take C Tracy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can follow <laughs> Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on uh, Instagram. You can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV rider, and everyday driver. Follow Ross at No Not Like the One from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. So, and we're going to have to do this again because I am super hesitant about adding a winch to the Suburban. And Ross keeps trying to convince me of that. Yep. And I was like, I have Max well, tracks. I don't know that I need a winch. We'll have to revisit this too because i I have andy to thank for the winch that's sitting on the floor next to me and uh and soon to be a review of it hopefully outstanding on the gx and inevitably based on my track record extracting the gx yeah you get stuck we know this i'm good at it yeah stuck happens as we said and (laughs) you know what i have max tracks and a winch so i'm not getting stuck that long (laughs) exactly it's (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, 100% yeah, understand I, so I, 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 uh, take pride in it <laughs> thank well, you so much you. for coming on the show Andy. hey thanks, my Andy. pleasure thanks for having me really appreciate <laughs> it you're welcome